chapter 1, verse 9. We're going to begin today with the third day of creation. In our book, page 6. Vayomer Elohim and Hashem said, Yikobu hamayim, let the waters gather together. Because up to that point, there was one mishmash of water and dry land. So there were no oceans and there were no continents, just one big mess. I have no idea how people went on cruises. <laughs> Yikobu hamayim, let the waters be gathered together, mitachas hashamayim, under the heavens, elmokim echa, to one place. If we gather the water together in one place, then the dry land will become visible. And so it was. Nine, because they were spread out on the entire face of the earth. And with this command, Hashem gathered them together into the oceans. This refers to the large sea of all seas. So what we call today oceans, and I believe to this day, all the oceans are somehow connected at some point, I think. Ten, certainly they were. And God called dry land, earth, and to the gathering of water. By the way, that's where we have the term. Mikveh, which refers to a ritual pool, because mikveh means gathering. Well, the mikveh hamayim, the gathering of water, karayamim, he referred to as seas. Vayad alakim kitev, and Hashem saw that it was good. So here we have the first mention of it is good in day three. Rashi, karayamim, seas, valayom echadu, we talked about one sea in the last verse, suddenly we have seas. Speaking specifically about the Mediterranean Sea, for example, the fish that comes into the fisherman's net at Aku doesn't taste the same as the fish from the same Mediterranean Sea that comes into the fisherman's net in Spain. So that the fish, although it's the same species, develops a different taste in one end of an ocean to the other end. Therefore, although the ocean is all interconnected, but the fact is there are different oceans with even different tasting fish and different properties to them. Eleven, Vayomer Elohim, and God said, desha, let the earth put forth greenery, ace of herbs, mazriazera, yielding seed, eights pre, fruit trees, bearing fruit after its kind, whose seed is within it, upon the earth, and so it was. These are two different words, Asev and Desha. And the Torah could not say because there are so many different types of greenery. Each one by itself is called a specific, particular breed of grass. Therefore, it's not poetic or it's not correct grammar to say desha plainly a specific. Desha shall shine desha because desha means a mantle of covering of greenery. But the various types of herbs, the specific type of grass is not called desha, it's called asif. Let it fill itself and cover itself with a garment of greenery, of herbs. All a mixture. Each root is called asif. Mazriazera, there's a special property to this creation called vegetation. that there should grow within it its own seed. where you can actually take the seed and transplant it to another location. that the taste of the tree 
should be reminiscent and similar to the taste of the fruit. That if you bite into the bark of an orange tree, it should taste orangey. But that doesn't happen. I don't know when the last time you bit into the bark of an orange tree. But you should try it. The trees did not follow the instructions. The tree gave out fruit, but it did not follow the command. And the tree itself was not fruity. Therefore, when man was cursed, then the earth was also cursed. Where it says that the earth should be cursed and should not give forth her produce. And it says when Mashiach comes, the trees will taste like the fruit. They are the kernels of seed of every fruit. From which the tree grows, when you plant it. Twelve, and the earth gave forth desha, grass, asev, herbs, mazriazera, yielding seed, lemineo, by their kinds. The eights, asepri, and a tree bearing fruit, ashazare, bay, the seed is in them, lemineo, by their kind. Vayara lukim kitev, and God saw that it was good. Twelve, atetze, or it's apapike, nevertheless, shalai, nemer, lemineo, bachayim, bitsibuyim. It did not say lemineo. With the command, Shomu, they heard, that the trees were commanded to do that. They learned a lesson for themselves. As it says in the Medrash, in Chulim. Twelve. Did we do twelve already? Thirteen. Vayhi Erev, Vayhi Boker, and evening came, and morning came, Yom Shlishi, the third day. Let's go into the fourth day. And Hashem said, Let there be lights in the firmament of heaven, to separate between day and night. It should be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. They were created, as is Rashi's philosophy throughout, on the first day, because Rashi says, Earlier, everything was created on the first day. But it was on the fourth day, Tziva, that they were, Aleyem, he commanded them, lead toles barakia, to be firmly suspended in the heaven. Vechain, and here Rashi lays down the law, that kol til de shamayim ba'oretz, all creation of heaven and earth, nivru, were created, miyem rishin, from the first day. And that's, as Rashi says, the meaning of reishis barakim as hashamayim ba'oretz. That God put everything in place. But the detailed application didn't take place until the particular day when it was told to go into detail mode, into action mode. Therefore, when the first verse in the Torah says, Eis HaShamayim, what does the Ace tell us? For the same money, the Torah could have said, Bereshis Boro Elohim Shamayim. The oretz, why ace hashamayim be ace oretz? The rabbis tell they say him to include everything associated with heaven, the ace oretz and the earth. The rabbis tell they say to include everything that is the product of the earth. Yehi meiris chaser vav. See if the word meiris should have a vav, so it's almost like meora, which is a curse. Al shuyei meira lipal askara b'tineikas. The fourth day of the week is not a good day when it comes to certain children's diseases. Hushi shoninu, and this is what we learn, where it says in Gemara, bedalid hayu mesanim al askara shleitipal b'tineikas that they would set aside Wednesdays as a day of fasting so that children not be attacked with croup or with other types of influenzas. When the first original light was concealed, then you would need the sun. Because as I mentioned earlier, how is it possible that there was evening and there was morning the first day when there was no sun until Wednesday? So when the world was created, there was a separate system of divine light and darkness which was concealed after the seventh day. Abel b'shivas yemei b'rei, it was a different system. It was a, a godly system of light. Abel b'shivas yemei b'rei, she'shemoshu erba chesha chadishenim yachad, 
Bain Bayem or Bain Balayla, but during the seven days of creation, the light and darkness ruled together, and therefore you need to have the sun and the moon to differentiate between light and darkness. We learned earlier that when Mashiach would come, the original light would be restored and bring true light to the world. When there are eclipses of the sun or the moon, it is not a good sign for the world, as it says, that even though the world, many people are fearful of eclipses, and an eclipse throughout the ages bore with it a suggestion of negative things, the Jew is told, no, you should not fear the signs of heaven. As far as you're concerned, Hashem created the heaven, Hashem created eclipses. You need to do the will of God and not fear any of the signs of heaven that others believe is negative. Shenamar, as it says in Yirmiyot in Jeremiah, Do not fear the signs of heaven. When you do, the will of God. You don't have to worry about punishment. Therefore, even those who interpret an eclipse as a negative thing to the Jew, transgressing God's will is a negative thing. Eclipses are not negative. Futuristically, because the Jewish people will be commanded regarding festivals. How do you know when it's a festival? Because festivals are calculated by the birth of the moon. The lunar calendar is what we use to determine festivals. On the lighter side, like the fellow said, I tried to be an atheist, but I couldn't because they have no holidays. Half the day the sun rules and half the day the moon rules. So you have a full day. What is considered a year? If the months are calculated by the lunar calendar, how do we calculate years? Years are always calculated by the solar calendar. Or at the end of 365 days plus a fraction of a day, the, the, they will complete their course through the 12 constellations of the zodiac, which serve them, that's what we call a year. And they return and start again, to go around as they first did. And that is what we refer to as a solar year. Fifteen, v'hoyu, and they shall be lemeires for lights, for luminaries. V'reki ashamayim, in the firmament of the heavens, l'hoyir ala artists to give light to the earth, v'yichain, and so it was. V'hoyu lemeires, eidzeis yisham shushiyori l'elam. In addition to the fact that the sun creates the calendar and the moon creates the calendar, they also give light. Again, on the lighter side, there's a story that they asked the Chelmites, which one is greater, the sun or the moon? And they spent a week meditating until finally they came back with their vote. And they said the moon is much, more, is much greater than the sun. They said, why? Because the sun illuminates during the day when it's light. The moon is illuminating at night when it's dark outside. And that's when we really appreciate it. That's uh, our contribution from Chelm today. Just to get your attention. Okay. 16. By Yaselakim and God made Eshnea Midas Agdelem the two great luminaries. As Hamoir Agodol Amem Shelas Hayem, the great luminary to rule the day. We as Hamoir Hakotan and the lesser luminary, Lamem Shelas Halayla, to rule the night. To Esach Echovim and the stars. Rashi brings a famous Medrash, Hamoiris Hagdelem Shovim Nivru, the sun and the moon were created equal. And the moon was reduced, because the moon came to Hashem and said, He said, Listen, God, it's impossible for two kings to share a crown. Me and the sun, it's not correct. One of us should be made smaller. So the Hashem said, Fine, you become smaller. And Kabbalistically and symbolically, this refers to the difficulties 
which the Jewish people who are compared to the moon suffer during the exile and in the blessing of Kiddush Halvona, in the blessing of the new moon, we ask God to restore the moon to its original splendor, meaning to bring about the redemption, to bring about the coming of Mashiach. One of my childhood stories, which I like to share, which I heard from my father time and again, which he heard from his father, the famous Hasid Rabbi Yechen and Gordon, that in their shtetl in Dokshitz, many, many years ago, there was an old pious Jew who in his shtetl was standing outside his broken chatke, his broken high school, his, his hut, and was very profoundly involved in reciting the prayer for the new moon. He was standing outside and deep in prayer, meditation, and he was reciting the words, and may the light of the moon be re renewed and be restored to be as powerful as the light of the sun. There was a, a free-thinking heretic who was probably a communist, who was involved in real issues of bringing betterment to society, who knew the world's solutions to all the world's problems, and he walked over and he mockingly said to this Jew, you poverty-stricken, impoverished excuse for a human being, you're standing outside your dilapidated shanty, your children are hungry, your wife is dressed in tatters, the world is topsy-turvy, and your only problem is that the moon is not as big as the sun. Other than that, all your issues are good. <laughs> all your ducks are lined up. You have one problem in life. The moon is smaller than the sun. Are you crazy? That's the problem with you Jews. So the man smiled and looked at him and he said, My friend, you don't get it. You don't begin to understand. I'm praying to God that the strength and, and, and the regal stature of the moon be restored to that it was, that which it was equal with the sun. And my friend, we're told that that will happen when Mashiach comes. And when that happens, my wife will have beautiful clothing and my children will have abundant food and I'll live in a palace and it'll bring an end to disease and an end to war and an end to inequality and an end to suffering. You don't understand, that's exactly what I'm praying for. And that's what the reduced size of the moon symbolizes in the teachings of Torah in general and Hasidus in particular. Because he reduced the moon, he increased its hosts to appease it. Uh, that was 16, 17, by Yitin Eishem Elohim, and God placed them in the firmament of the heaven, to illuminate the earth, and to rule by over the day and the night, to separate between light and darkness, by and God saw it was good, by and evening came and morning came, and it was the fourth day, and we'll stop right here.